now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited. Isis, all that glitters. The goddess next door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, all that glitters in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. I had a chance to take a look at the Peacemaker series on HBO Max. And after watching the first three episodes, this series is just like the tick on crack. Now, many of the comic fans and comic book YouTubers are upset regarding this Peacemaker series because it's not staying true to the DC comics or the Charlton comics that the character was based on. But what many comic fans and comic book YouTubers don't really understand about the Peacemaker series is that the Peacemaker series is basically a satire in the style of the legendary 1980s and early 1990s comic series, The Tick. Now, if you've read The Tick comic books or watched The Tick animated series in the 1990s or the 2000 live-action Tick series, you'll know that The Tick was basically a satire of the entire superhero genre, poking fun at many of the comic book superhero tropes. Now, your James Gunn in writing the Peacemaker series is creating a similar style of satire to The Tick, and what he's doing in the Peacemaker series is he is making a satire poking fun at the modern genre of superhero comics, namely the so-called SJW comics, produced at Marvel Comics and DC Comics currently. And your James Gunn does a fantastic job of poking fun at your modern SJW comics while also paying homage to many of the foundations of the source material. So I cannot really say that this series is terrible because I understand what James Gunn is doing with this satire, and I understand that while he's not staying true to the source material, what he's doing is poking fun at your modern day comics and how they are completely out of touch with these characters and the source material. Now, your Peacemaker series starts out at the end of the Suicide Squad, and it shows the Peacemaker recovering from his injuries in the hospital. Now, your Peacemaker has been discharged from the hospital, and he soon realizes that nobody's coming back to arrest him, so he starts to make a plan for a break. And in that plan to make a break, he winds up leaving the hospital and he gets, after talking to one of the janitors about smoking a blunt, he then goes out here and slips by them in his damaged and dirty costume and gets into a cab. Now your Peacemaker, as we're starting to get to know him, we're starting to see that he didn't really have that great of a life, and we start to see that he's not really the sharpest knife in the drawer or the brightest bulb in the tree. So, this Peacemaker guy, he's not really that smart, and he's not really that, 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 that savvy, but he's, he's basically, we're starting to see, is similar to the Tick, basically a tool. So, your Peacemaker, after he gets out of the cab, after paying the fare by trading his helmet, then goes to his trailer, where we see, basically, the Peacemaker... Well, even though he's got this all-American motif on his trailer, it's basically living very poorly. Now, your Peacemaker, he doesn't even have a key to his trailer, breaks into the window, and then he's, he's in there sitting up crying, and it's really sad. And then we find out he was basically being set up by Amanda Waller to get captured once again. And your Amanda Waller is basically trying to get revenge on her staff for stabbing her in the back in the Suicide Squad. Now, she ordered the, her staff to go out here and kill the heroes and the villains, really. They were villains because this is Task Force X and they were going on a mission. And they didn't do it. And as a result, most of those villains went out here 
and stopped Storo instead of completing their mission. Now, the Peacemaker was the only one to follow the mission, and he was only following the mission because basically he's an idiot. And your Amanda Waller, realizing that these staffers, they, they, they were practically being stupid by turning on her, she has now assigned them to go out here and work with the Peacemaker. Now, the Peacemaker is a bumbling, stumbling clown, and they, them being assigned to him is not really a prime assignment, and that's, really, that's, that's something that is shown as the series goes on. Now, the character of the Peacemaker is, again, he's this white male, and he's the son of a white supremacist, and he's been taught to make peace by any means necessary, including violence. And he knows how to kill a bunch of d different ways, but he doesn't really know how to relate to people, and he has some of the worst social skills. Even his own father calls him a simp when he's trying to get a new helmet, and his own father has little respect for his son. So what they're saying with the Peacemaker is that he's one of these beta males, and he's a complete failure as related to whatever his father was planning for him to be. But Amanda Waller has him assigned to this group of agents who take on the social justice tropes as they go to meet him. In the scene in a, in a restaurant, we see the forced cursing and we get to see the e eating. And we also, as the series goes on in the first episode, see that the Peacemaker is just again what what his father said he is a simp with no social skills because he tries to hit on hit one of the women who he's working with which is a no-no as related to the job something i talk about in depth in my book stop simping in the workplace but that doesn't stop mr simp peacemaker from going out here and trying to pick up his co-worker at the job now after she shoots him down he gets involved with a woman who is part of his mission, which is to stop these so-called butterflies. And after he goes out here and gets the draws from this weird-looking female, what happens is he has a big fight with her, and, and this is this first encounter with one of these mysterious butterflies. Now, as this is going on, your Adrian Chase finds out that the Peacemaker is out, and that's when I start to realize that this series is nothing like the DC Comics and is definitely a satire. Now, this satire basically is borrowing with, from Deadpool with this version of Adrian Chase because Adrian Chase in the comics was a very rich and successful district attorney who wound up becoming the vigilante after a mobster wound up murdering his family in the now classic the New Teen Titans Annual 2. And in that story, Adrian Chase is a rich man who is successful, but in this Peacemaker series, Adrian Chase is a guy who works at a Mexican restaurant, and when I saw him working in the Mexican restaurant and cracking wise, that's when I knew that they were making Adrian Chase into Deadpool, and basically that's what his character is, the DC version of Deadpool. They can't make Deathstroke the Terminator into Deadpool because Deathstroke the Terminator is a very popular character and he's currently being used at DC Comics and other properties. And your Death Deadpool was basically a satire version of Deathstroke, but for this series, instead, since they couldn't use Deathstroke, they used the other Teen Titans character, who was already dead for the last 40 years or so, Vigilante, and they decided to make Vigilante the Deadpool that would play off of your Peacemaker, who is basically the Tick. So we have a Tick Arthur type thing going with, dead, with your um, Vigilante and your Peacemaker that builds up into the third episode, the second episode is, is, a, is an interesting one, but the third one really starts to show us this sort of dynamic. And as he was cracking wise and taking these shots, we start to see that this is a, that Vigilante is basically Deadpool. Now, there, Amanda Waller's daughter has also been assigned 
to this team and she is another SJW trope in that she is an alphabet character who was a black woman and that is another SJW trope that is a part of your SJW comics. So this Peacemaker series does a great job of presenting you all of these SJW tropes in a fresh and fun way and it's a lot more fun than many of your SJW comics and it, that just shows that the skill of your James Gunn as related to writing and it shows that he really did his research as related to studying your SJW comics because all three of these episodes really do a great job of poking fun at all of the tropes that are a part of your SJW comics and presents the material in a way that makes it feel different, makes it feel unique, and doesn't make it terrible. The only tr the only SJW trope, oh yeah, we did get to see Head Trauma in Episode 3, so yeah, he poked fun at all of the tropes with this whole um, Peacemaker series, and this Peacemaker series is, is just, again, it's absolutely ridiculous, it's absolutely absurd, and it's definitely not for children, I would say, because the first episode has a lot of nudity, and it has a lot of sex, and has sex scenes, and extremely graphic violence. This is an R-rated series, and this is one not for the kids, but if you like comics, and you like comic book satire, and you like to see somebody poking fun at many of what they call the SJW comics, you should definitely check out The Peacemaker, because this series, it, while many comic fans are upset that it's not what true to the source material, and really makes fun of white males, it really does a good job of poking fun at the all of the tropes like social justice warriors present in comics, and shows us how these tropes can be made entertaining with really solid writing and really solid character development. Your Peacemaker is available on HBO Max right now to view, and if you want to go out here and check it out, go head over to HBO Max and check it out. Now, if you want to see me do more comic TV show and movie reviews, you can donate to my Patreon, my PayPal, or my Cash App so that I can be able to pay for subscription services like HBO Max and Disney Plus so I can watch those series. And if you want to pick up some of my action-packed fantasy fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Hay series, and the books of the Spencerella trilogy, you can find those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find them on Smashwords, the iBook Store, and Google Play. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle, vampires stalk the darkness of the Eternal Night. Get your copy of Eternal Night in paperback and Kindle on Amazon.com.